What's up guys, it's Endymion and today I want to talk about the history behind one of PlayStation's greatest failures and how it led to the rise of the Souls-like genre we all love today. This is the story of how From Software became PlayStation's greatest failure and regret. And now, let's begin. So back in the mid-2000s, a little company known as From Software would try to develop an action RPG but lacked any creative vision. During this time, a developer at From Software named Hidetaka Miyazaki would step up and saw this project as his golden opportunity to create a game he always wanted to make. And since the project was such a mess already, this allowed Miyazaki the means to finally create his dream game. The original design of Demon Souls was considered visionless and lacked any meaning or creativity. According to the developers, Demon Souls didn't even become an actually playable game that made any sense until very late into development. The game was to be, as Miyazaki put it, a hardcore action RPG that was built around being challenging but rewarding, which Miyazaki felt was a subgenre of gaming that was largely absent in the industry at the time. During its development, executives over at PlayStation would routinely meet with From Software's developers and the first-time director Miyazaki to discuss what exactly this Demon Souls game was going to be about. Miyazaki was so hell-bent on making his hardcore game a reality, he admitted to concealing design documents and ideas from the executives, like how dying would make players lose everything and how hard it actually was, mostly because if the executives realized how difficult the game actually was going to be, he would be forced to make it easier which would then ruin his creative vision. It was also to ensure the game wouldn't have its financial backing pulled before completion as well. Eventually, From Software would create Demon Souls over three years of intense development, and the game was ready to be shown to the public, where its first public demo was declared an absolute disaster, and many people who tried the game actually thought it was incomplete due to how obtuse and strangely difficult it was. Demon Souls would release in Japan to decent reviews and really low sales, being considered a niche title and a financial disaster that didn't click with gamers due to how weird and archaic it was compared to other games of its time. After its lackluster Japanese performance, Sony and its PlayStation brand would be left with a decision to either publish Demon's Souls in Western markets or pass on it entirely. One of the executives who had a final say was Shuhei Yoshida, who said when he originally played Demon Souls that it was garbage. Yoshida said, and I quote, For my personal experience with Demon Souls, when it was close to final, I spent close to two hours playing it, and after two hours, I was still standing at the beginning of the game. He admitted, I said, this is crap, this is an unbelievably bad game, so I put it aside. That's crazy to read now, thinking that Demon Souls is a bad game, but anyway, in in that moment, PlayStation would decide to pass on publishing Demon Souls outside of Japan, and ultimately this would lead to a colossal regret that would haunt PlayStation for years to come. Eventually, Demon Souls would be released in the West with the help of Atlas and was actually met with universal critical acclaim. The game meshed incredibly well with Western audiences and was seen as a breakout hit, selling well over a million copies. Sony was left completely confused and due to this newfound success, it led to Miyazaki and From Software being offered a deal with Bandai Namco. And since Sony owned the rights to Demon's Souls, From Software was forced to abandon their game in its world, but Miyazaki Miyazaki, now a proven director who had the creative insight many others lacked at the time, was able to reach a deal with Bandai and brought upon his eventual masterpiece known as Dark Souls. Sony, however, stood in bewilderment at the profound missed opportunity to not only publish Demon Souls in the West, but lost the chance to acquire From Software. If Sony acquired FromSoft all those years back, the acquisition would have cost Sony mere pocket change, and the investment would have led to the entire Dark Souls series, Sekiro, and even Elden Ring being PlayStation-exclusive titles that Sony would have definitely benefited greatly from. But the regretful action of dropping Demon Souls because they didn't believe in it led to one of the greatest release showcases of any studio in the past 20 years, which then garnered many Game of the Year nominations and awards and millions of copies sold, which then led to an entire popular subgenre of gaming being called Souls Likes or Souls Born. What's funny is that Sony would end up using the template and design ideas of Demon Souls for their own projects in the coming years. For example, God of War's reimagined 
imagining feels quite a bit like a Souls-like in how it plays and operates as well as Sony eventually remaking Demon's Souls in its entirety for the launch of the PS5. It wasn't all bad for Sony however because after the release of Dark Souls they offered Miyazaki, who was now seen as a rockstar visionary director, a proposal to come back and develop another title but this time for the PlayStation 4. And since Sony owned the rights to Demon's Souls, Miyazaki agreed to make another game with the same company that dropped him just a few years back and instead of making a direct sequel to Demon, From Software instead would create a title with the DNA and level design of their first Souls title, this eventually would lead to the creation of Bloodborne, which is largely considered to be From Software's most well-loved game by the majority of the community. What's funny is that Yoshida, who originally said Demon's Souls was a terrible game, would eventually go back to it and beat it. Yoshida has even gone on to Platinum Bloodborne, showing that he now understood why everyone loves these kinds of games, and now even champions From Software's titles and calls himself a mega fan of them, which is great. But even to this day, Shuhei Yoshida still remarks that Sony's passing on From Software and the publishing of Demon's Souls in the West was one of the greatest failures of the PlayStation brand as a whole. It's kind of like going to a garage sale and seeing a dirty rock and passing on it for a dollar only to realize later it's a diamond and kicking yourself for not buying it for next to nothing when you could have. Although there has been rumors of Sony maybe trying to acquire From Software now, those are just ultimately rumors. But if Sony had the foresight to trust Miyazaki all the way back in the mid 2000s, Sony would have acquired one of the most legendary modern gaming studios of our time for a fraction of the price they're worth now. And I just know Sony is banging their heads on the wall for not realizing it sooner. And like the weird girl who blossoms over summer break and becomes a total babe, Sony too was kicking itself for not seeing the potential of what From Software was going to become all those years ago. But that's the nature of game development and gambles. You can't win them all, but damn that would have been a good win if it did happen. But anyway, that my friends is how From Software became PlayStation greatest failure. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Imagining a world where all these amazing games would be PlayStation exclusive titles would have been a massive boon to the PlayStation brand beyond even what it is now. But there are whispers that Sony isn't done with Bloodborne and From Software, so maybe one day we'll know if this story will eventually reach a conclusion with one day the acquisition of From Software happening. I guess we'll see. Anyway, like the video if you did, share the video to help spread the word, and subscribe to give my life meaning. Thanks to my patrons as always for their continued support, and I'm Endymion, I'll see you in the next one.